Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, it's not just me, it's a lot of other people who are part of this project. Um, all their names are listed here, uh, don't read it now. Um, I just want to talk about one aspect of refinery. Refinery uh, does a lot of things, I'll give you an idea in a second. Um, so what is refinery? For those who have never heard about it, it's essentially a platform that provides visualization tools uh, and analysis pipelines, and all of that is built around an ISA tap um, compatible data repository. So our goal uh, with Refinery is really to not only to have these pipelines, but really make it easier to work with uh, large data sets or data sets that have hundreds or thousands of files. And um, that's why we need a data repository that can handle all of this. Um, analysis pipelines are uh, something where we just rely on a good old community developed software, in this case, Galaxy and Cloudman to execute workflows and to run these things. Um, I'm not going to say Docker or Jupyter, by the way, today. Um, I've just done it. But so um, we are um, not at the point where we put stuff into Docker containers. Nonetheless, we spent the last year in creating a pretty uh, straightforward deployment process um, on Amazon Web Services. Originally, we just ran the stuff uh, on local clusters, but that's all in place now. Um, that's where we're using Galaxy Cloudman for execution. And um, in terms of features of, of um, Refinery, so one piece, uh, we have a data repository with rich metadata and ontology. So we build a couple of visualization or visual exploration tools to discover data sets in this uh, system. So we have, for example, a collection of uh, more than 200 stem cell related data sets. And with these uh, visual exploration tools, you can discover data sets that might be relevant for your work. Um, obviously, you can import your own data or use public data analyze that. Uh, we have combined our um, data repository and the metadata in that repository with the way how we set up analyses. So you can quickly filter on metadata attributes to create, for example, paired lists of inputs if you want to run certain types of analyses. Um, collaboration features are in here. So you can share data sets, analyses with your friends and colleagues. Um, if you share a data set, other people can run analyses on it and make them available themselves. Uh, we have some visualization tools. Um, that's stuff that we'll still work on in the future, so we haven't added as much as we originally had anticipated uh, to add at this point. But um, that's, that's uh, the focus of my lab, so there will be much more stuff in the future. Um, ultimately, you can publish your data sets, uh, make them discoverable through our uh, data repository, and share links and things like that. So um, one piece is the reproducibility, right? That's an important problem. We've just heard about it. It is problematic. Now, um, <clears throat> we have a solution to uh, make analyses at least more reproducible. So um, there's a provenance graph inside of Refinery for every data set, for every analysis, um, for every analysis. And um, you know, it's a graph, so it's easy to visualize, generally not. Um, so the general solution to graph visualization is the hairball. Um, there is no way to generally you know, visualize a graph with hundreds or thousands of nodes and edges. But uh, we can exploit a couple of properties of these provenance graphs that we have in there. Um, so A, they're hierarchical. B, uh, they have, um, so the hierarchy here is uh, workflows, files, and tools. Um, we have time as an aspect, so these analyses are executed at certain time points. So we can exploit that information. And so what we do is we essentially aggregate these graphs. Um, that's pretty straightforward. The hierarchy is already given. Um, we do one extra step where we compress essentially similar motifs in the graph into nodes. And um, well, once we have a compressed graph, obviously it looks very simple, but then we need to be able to go back to some details. So we have some sort of expansion of sub parts in the graph that is based on the user interest. And we compute a degree of interest function that takes into account, for example, execution time, what the user has selected or um, highlighted in the graph, um, and a couple of other things. And then we can sort of um, dynamically expand those pieces that are relevant to what the user is trying to achieve. And um, we have a paper on that, um, on this approach. It's been published at Eurovis uh, in June. But uh, unfortunately, the publisher for that conference has not managed to make our paper open access. So for now, I'm just going to refer you to the uh, uh, preprint and bioarchive, which does have all the secrets in it. So you can just go there and have a look at that if you're interested. And finally, um, I am hiring postdocs. For anyone interested in data visualization, there's money, coffee, um, and really interesting problems. Thank you. <laughs>